consider the following scenario. The government is going to introduce a tax per unit of good Q of size tau greater than zero. That he knows is going to do. But there is a debate of how to split or, or who pays the tax, how to split it between consumers and, and firms. So what there is a debate about which fraction should be paid by consumers and which fraction should be paid by firms. Now, the politics of this type of tax debate generates a lot of a lot of uh, passion. And to be precise, let me define a class of policies. So we can define a class of policies indexed by A, which is a number greater than zero, greater or equal to zero, less than one, that has a following property. Um, A is basically the tax spread. So A is the fraction of the tax paid by the consumers. So that we have tau, tau F is equal to A tau, so tau, con tau consumers, and the tau of the firms is equal to 1 minus A tau. And you can have any possible split. Now, this question about whether it matters with it, who pays the tax is a question of incidence. And in particular, in economics, there are there is a distinction between legal incidence and economic incidence. The legal incidence is who sends a check to the government. Literally, who has the obligation to pay the tax by sending a check or pay the tax at the type of sale to the government. The other one is an economic evidence, which is who bears the cost of the tax. And the reason that these battles make economists um, laugh sometimes is because people get very invested on fights about the legal incidents that have no impact on economic evidence. It, it, in economic uh, incidence. In fact, these two things are normally or typically different. And people should fight about economic incidence, but not about legal incidence. And in particular, I'm about to show you that it doesn't really matter who pays the tax in this case. So there should be no debate about Claim. Um, the equilibrium allocation is independent of A. And therefore, it doesn't matter who pays the tax. Now, let's prove, let's see why that is the case. Now, the first thing to notice here, we have to be careful, is um, about what price is what. So notice that P is the market price, which is literally the amount of cash per unit bought exchanged between buyers and sellers. However, given the tax, we have this P plus A tau is the total cost per unit to consumers, which is different than the market price. And also, given the tax system, P minus 1 minus A tau is the total revenue per unit to firms. Okay? Now, Notice that the consumers are going to react to the tax at any market price P for a tax given by A by basically trying to shift the tax, as we have been seeing repeatedly, by demanding the same amount that they demand without tax at P plus A tau. This is for A equals zero, which is a case of no tau, of no tax on consumers. And their firms are going to do a similar thing at any price for any level of the split A. They are going to want to supply what they, at the same thing that they supplied at the price shifted down 
by the tax when there was sorry when they faced no tax when there was no tax which for the case is um, let me write this differently to avoid confusion I'm just not gonna put um, an A so this is a case of no tax actually let me just say here no tax no tax okay now market equilibrium is gonna require it's gonna be a P star as a function of a that has the property that the demand with no tax at P star of a plus a ta is equal to the supply with no tax at P star of a minus 1 minus a tau because that is the level that equates aggregate demand and aggregate supply when the tax is there one more thing is let P star be the equilibrium price P star of tau, I'm going to write like that, be equal to the equilibrium price when A is equal to 1. In other words, all tax paid by consumers. I'm sorry, when A is equal to 0, all tax is paid by firms. Okay, but then notice that the following, this implies that P star of A equals to p star of tau minus a tau clears the market in all cases why because if you substitute here you see that this implies that the demand for p given a is going to be equal substituting the demand with no tax at p star of tau and the supply at p of a again substituting is going to be equal to the supply with no tax at p star of tau minus tau but these are exactly these have to be equal by the definition of P star of tau. Remember that when all of the tax is paid by firms, this is the demand, this is the supply, and in equilibrium, these are equal. So we have that the market clears for every case. And not only that, since this is always equal to P star of tau, and this is always equal to P star of tau minus tau, and it's independent of A, this implies that the equilibrium allocation is independent of A. In other words, the tax, how the tax is split between cons by consumers and firms does not matter. The following graph should provide you with a nice, uh, simple physical, uh, graphical intuition for what is going on. So this is going to be the demand when tax is zero, when there is no tax, and the supply when there is no tax. Okay, now what happens in the case in which all of the tax is paid by the producer. That is a case in which A is equal to zero, and what we have is that this is equal, the demand doesn't change. But the supply shifts up by tau. And this becomes a new equilibrium price. So this is P star of a equals zero okay now let's see what happens in the opposite case when all of the tax is paid by the consumer so a is equals one in this particular case the supply doesn't change but the tax sorry the demand function shifts down by the size of the tax also by tau 
So this is going to be tau greater than 0, a equals 1. And what we have is um, a price here at a equals 1. And this distance is exactly tau. That you can see here, since the equilibrium quantity doesn't change, x star with tau greater than 0, a equals 1, is equal to x star with tau greater than 0, a equals 0.